the sight of hate We will love your neighbors Just like we could love ourselves We got to come together Cause in the end we can make it all right We got to bring the weather Through all of the storms We got to come together Cause in the end we can make it all right We've got to learn to love Welcome to worship tonight here at Flame of Faith United Methodist Church. My name is Jansen. I am a worship leader here. I'm also the administrative assistant. I'm also a seminary student, and I have mm, one week left before classes start. Jealous. Jealous? Mm, I've got a nice stack of books at home. If you're interested in tonight's order of worship, you can go to our website, flameoffaithumc.org, and click on the button that says Order of Worship. It takes you to a page that has the Order of Worship. Uh, this is the same for both Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. It's both going to be there. And there's also a PDF file that has all the rest of the details, like the song lyrics, the scripture, the prayers, anything else that's spoken, and any other important information that you need to know. So I highly suggest you go check that out. We also have a visual order of worship in the pews. It's a vertical form that has everything that happens up here has a picture of it, and then everything that's going to happen out there has a picture of it. So it's easy to follow for people who don't yet read or for people who just connect better with a, a more visual representation of what's happening here. Sometimes there are things printed out. Uh, today's not one of those days. Today's, today's not one of those days. Yep, moving on. Moving on. It's been, yeah, it's been a day. We have clipboards in the pews. If you would, if you're willing, sign in on one of those. There is a section on the top if you just want to quickly sign your name in, or if you'd like to tell us more, there's a bigger box. There's a special or a spot on there for prayer requests. If there's anything you'd like us to help you in praying with you and praying for you. You can also sign in in the same way, but in a digital format. 
if you go down into the description of this video or if you look at our Facebook page, is also going to have that link on there. Same thing that's in the clipboard, but in a digital way. Now I'd like to transition us into a time of prayer this evening. We'll start with a time of silent prayer. I will continue with the pastoral prayer. And then we will join together for the Lord's Prayer. Now the Lord's Prayer is going to be on the screen. It'll be in that PDF file. But this is just one version of the Lord's Prayer. When we get there, feel free to pray it in whatever, whatever format, whatever wording, whatever language you are used to. And like I said, there are, there's a spot on the clipboard and on the digital sign-in for prayer requests. We definitely want to hear from you. You can write it on the clipboard, the online check-in. You can email us. You can give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Let us pray. Gracious God of all ages, we humbly come to this place to be your people, to sing your songs, to lift up your name, your work, your mission as the most important things in a world that often marks the smallest things as of highest importance. We fall short, we fail to learn, we have to live through the same lessons over and over, but in the midst of it, you're there to provide your graceful love. We know that we are beloved when the world tells us otherwise, that we do not fit the so-called right molds or features. Because of you, we know these things are false and not worth dwelling on. No matter how we differ from our neighbors, we are precious. We praise you and seek you, for you have been with us for ages past. We follow you and look to you for our lives, because indeed, your steadfast love endures forever. While we as limited creatures seek to grasp that fully, uh, we live in cycles of repetition and renewal. We need these cycles of life to become our full selves. We need the stories, the lessons, the instruction more than once, as we need newness in the midst of the familiar. We must hear of your goodness, love, and mission time and time again until we can grasp it for ourselves in our own ways. Thank you for the grace to live this process and discernment out as we will and for the support to help make the, real, the life real and authentic to us. We pray all these things in the name of our graceful teacher who loves us and names us as his, just as we are. Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now is the time in the service where we have the opportunity to give of ourselves through our tithes and our offerings. You can give online at flameoffaithumc.org slash donate. You can give through the Vanco mobile app. If you just search for Flame of Faith United Methodist Church, you'll find it on there. You can give through paper check. If you mail it to the church, the address is on the screen. And Pastor Sarah is coming around with the offering plate. Now let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving over this evening's offering. Holy and righteous God, through your Son, you have called us to follow. The gifts we offer this day are only a small token of affirmation that we accept that call. If we embrace the full meaning of that call, we would give our whole being to the offering. In many cases, we've allowed ourselves to believe that dollar bills and an hour on Sunday or Wednesday is the, it's the cost of discipleship. But help us to stop fooling ourselves and consider the full cost of a discipleship that means something that is capable of transforming the world. By your grace and with the help of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
sisters, brothers, we've got to learn to love each other. Our Father in heaven has called us to be instruments of peace, children of his mercy. The time has come to face the sun and hold up high the banner of love of the Lord until we gather in the sky. All God's children of love and light, every heart will be unified, singing praise to the Lord our King. Children of love and light, we are the body of Christ, the kingdom come, the hands and feet of his will be done, a torch in the dark of a dying place, the living light of his saving grace, the living light of a man. to learn to love each other a father in heaven has called us to be instruments of peace jesus is the prince Thank you both for leading us in song uh, and prayer to start us off today. I'm Pastor Sarah McManus, and I'm excited to gather um, with you all in worship tonight. Uh, those of you who are here in the sanctuary causing a ruckus, uh, and those of you who are at home, I assume also causing a ruckus. I hope it is chaos and fun in your house as much as it is here in God's house. Uh, we have a lot of fun in worship together. Before we get too far, we've got our announcements, hygiene kits, and school supplies. We continue to gather those uh, here in the, uh, at the church. Our mission team is working on getting all those together and where they need to go. As well, um, Flame Kids begins next week on Wednesday nights and on Sundays, so starting September 7th and then September 11th for the Sundays. Uh, our Flame Kids will be happening. Also, youth group starts tonight. So if you are watching and you are in 7th through 12th grade and you want to drive your car, Jansen is behind the camera going like, drive. I mean, Jansen, enough of them know how to drive and can drive their own cars, including your son. No, okay, well, we'll get to that later. Anyway, youth group starts tonight if you wanna get here, and it's actually, youth group is at seven o'clock instead of 6.45. Uh, we made that change last year and I forgot to change it on all of the public things, but the youth know. <laughs> it's at seven o'clock. Uh, so. That is uh, youth group, that starts tonight. And then next Wednesday, um, before we get to the choir, next Wednesday, confirmation will start. Uh, so confirmation is, every, uh, is going to be every other Wednesday night. 
uh, while youth group is also happening in a different part of the building. So the high schoolers will be in youth group and the middle schoolers will be gathered in confirmation on, uh, starting on September 7th. September 13th, we're starting all kinds of stuff soon. September 13th, our choir will get started. Bill uh, Eng Eng Egan, thank you. I forgot his last name for a second. Sorry, Bill. Bill Egan will be uh, leading our choir, our new choir director, and that will be on Tuesdays at seven o'clock here in the sanctuary. Our BUMC t-shirt giveaway, I've made Jansen give this spiel every time, so I will see if I can, oh, all right. So throughout the month of September on Sundays, we are going to be uh, drawing five names out of a bucket of names uh, to receive a lovely BUMC, hashtag BUMC t-shirt. Um, hashtag BUMC, those of you who don't know what hashtags are, I'm not gonna explain. Ask somebody else, um, somebody who uses the internet. Anyway, um, hashtag BUMC helps is a way of uh, kind of advertising the United Methodist Church. There's been a lot of misinformation going on from uh, those who are wanting to leave the United Methodist Church. And so one of the ways that we're talking about it is what does it mean to actually be United Methodist? And so this is a shirt, you can grab that, but to get it, you have to participate in our little uh, fun drawing. You don't have to dance. To do the drawing, you uh, can either send us an email or send us some information, name, that kind of theme, email address, and then answer the following questions. Why did you come? Why did you, f what, what brought you first to Flame of Faith United Methodist? And then what keeps you coming back? Out of those that have entered, we'll draw some names and give out some t-shirts all through September. All right, other ways that you can get connected. Um, I'm still looking for somebody to help out with confirmation, so if that person is you, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we are looking for a tech folk, um, liturgists, com or, uh, communion stewards. Uh, we could use a few more people to hang out with our flame kids and other, um, other events. Are, anyone is welcome to join the choir, no matter your age, no matter your uh, talent, ability to read music, any of the above. So uh, we'd love for you to get connected in uh, any of those ways. All right, I think those are all of our announcements. I'm sure there's more, but for now, we're gonna go back to the Psalms. So after the last few weeks, we've spoken about the Psalms and the ways that they often speak the emotions of our hearts that we're kind of sometimes unable to speak aloud or to say. Or as one commentator wrote, the genius of the Psalms lies in the fact that they are both instructional and, or inspirational and instructive, both poetic and practical. They speak both to the heart and to the mind. To put it another way, the Psalms say the things we would like to say if we had the wisdom, the insight, and the ability. I know uh, those of you who are here a couple weeks ago, you might recognize that quote, but I thought we might want it again to remind us of the way the Psalms speak to us, even when we are not sure what we're trying to say. So today, uh, we're going to talk about the Psalms of prophecy. The Psalms of prophecy are, are Psalms that after the fact, uh, we look back and see some connections, especially connections to Jesus. And so this is Psalm 22, and um, uh, the connections to Jesus will be a little obvious to you. Um, Jesus also quotes this psalm uh, as well. Um, it might be obvious to you. That was a big assumption on my part. I apologize. So Psalm 22, to the leader according to the deer of the dawn, which I'm guessing is a specific, uh, was a specific tune that they sang this to, a psalm of David. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from my helping me from my words of my groaning? My God, I cry by day, and yet you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, 
enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe at my mother's breast. On you I was cast from birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near as there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax and it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a pot shard and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes amongst themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, for the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the afflicted or the the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May our hearts live forever. And at the ends of the earth all shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow down all who go to dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Here ends the reading. Now we're going to start with some structure. And I know this is everyone's favorite thing to do. Who doesn't love poetic structure? Okay, so I've raised hands of people who actually do not love poetic structure. So I'm going to ignore them and talk to you all. So this is a psalm of of lament. It's a psalm that says, uh, you know, something's wrong. Save me. And so all the psalms of lament are structured in the same way. So they start with an opening address. My God, my God. They have a description of trouble. There's why have you forsaken me? The dogs circle me. I am poured out, my enemies. There is a plea for help. Do not be far from me. Come quickly to my aid. There are words of trust. From the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. There's a promise of praise. Posterity shall serve him, proclaiming his deliverance to people yet unborn. This same structure goes throughout the Psalms of Lament throughout the book of Psalms, and I won't actually go farther than that. But... The author, the author sees God, sees God and trusts God, even in the midst of this kind of awful time that is surrounding the author. The author is not having a good day or time in general. This is much like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had our Psalms of Desperation, where the, in despair, in the midst of struggle, the psalmist cries out to God. And even in the worst of everything, 
There is a choice to remember and to trust in that, and that gives us the strength to keep going. We do this all the time in our lives. We remind ourselves, well, it's not as bad as last time. Or, I survived worse, we're gonna be fine. I can do this. I can do this. It's fine. These are phrases we use. (laughs) These are phrases we use to remind ourselves that we've been through stuff, and we've survived, and we can move on. But sometimes we hide behind that singular, I can do this, and we forget about the we in we can do this. We are not meant to do it alone. And even the psalmist reaches out for help. And God's help comes, of course, in many forms, from the hand that holds us above water when we feel like we're drowning, to the medicines, doctors, and scientists that help us survive or cure disease, From the neighbors who help with physical needs to the friend who listens to the struggles, these are the ways that God's help shows up in our lives. God's help is there, and the hardest part in the midst of all of it is to trust that it is there. Now, I mentioned Jesus in reference to this psalm, and one of the reasons this particular psalm sounds so familiar is because of Jesus quoting it on the cross. So in Mark 15, verses 33 through 39, we have the story of Jesus' death on the cross. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is, of course, the quote. And when some of the bystanders heard this, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on the stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain from the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. Now Jesus quotes this line from Psalm 22 and this connection to Jesus and some of the other familiar phrases you might see or have heard as I read that. There's the casting of lots, the mocking of enemies. This is one of the reasons we call it a psalm of prophecy. Now, This is the, I don't know, weird reality of prophecy in the Bible, is that, you know, someone being executed, being mocked by their enemies and having their possessions haggled over is not exactly a strange occurrence, Um, not particularly out of the ordinary or particular to Jesus' crucifixion. Truthfully, most of their crucifixions probably had the same things happening. But what, in quoting this psalm on the cross, Jesus reminds us of the importance of these words. And so we have this moment where Jesus connects us back to this psalm. Not only in the specific words of Jesus' mouth that share in the depth of his struggle on the cross, that feeling abandoned, unloved, forgotten, that phrase really evokes a lot of emotions for us. But the depth of Jesus' emotion on the cross is not something to be easily lightened. That fear and despair is real. This is the worst of the worst, and our God is there with humanity, right there with us. And for some of humanity who have been through the worst of the worst, and often for all of us who, while not living into the comparative worst of the world, as if suffering were a competition, but our worst, that knowledge that Christ is there with us, feeling abandoned, lost, and alone is really important. And that's important and comforting in the way that, you know, only a hand that is holding ours close can be. But when we also look at the words behind Jesus' statement, the full psalm, 
Because as we spoke before, Jesus was a rabbi, a fully educated, trained teacher in his own Jewish tradition. So no doubt Jesus knew this psalm by heart. Maybe even sang it to himself in the cross to remind him to sing a full song of lament and assurance. To sing of our despair a bit, a line, and, and, and to let the assurance of God's presence come over us. This is that reminder that, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. Reminds us that God is there through the fear, the unknown, and even in the midst of our enemies. For those of us who have grown up in the church, all I have to say is the Lord is my shepherd and our brains supply the rest. I shall not want, yea, though I walk through the valley. And my brain, of course, teaches me in that old version, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no, you know, not even in the version I have read literally today multiple times. This is trying to find a good example of what this feels like. This is like, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. For those of us who have grown up in the church or even just been through, you know, one or two Advents, a Christmas, we know that tune. We know that we use it in the church as a way to remind us of the struggles of the world and to remind us that in the midst of all of that, we cry out to God and we welcome Christ back once more. Advent which is right before Christmas, for those of you who don't know that word, is it's the waiting. It's the lament of a broken world. It's Christmas begins with the hope of change and growth and life. And that's exactly what this psalm is wanting to do. We hear, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we kind of stop. Because this psalm doesn't speak to us in the same way. We forget the lines to come. We forget, okay, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> we forget the next line, all the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall worship before him. For the dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. This is that, there's that hope that comes after, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There's an assurance at the end of the psalm. It's very much like hearing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and then going on and singing, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. The Psalms of Lament in the Book of Psalms are a reminder of that same theme throughout the rest of them, that God is with us. The Lord is my shepherd. God will redeem. Emmanuel shall come to you. No matter the struggle, no matter the loneliness, no matter the time of year or the sins of our lives, no matter what is going on, no matter if it feels like we are encircled by our enemies, God is here. God is with us because the begging of O come, O come, Emmanuel will always make way for the joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. I went up higher than I was supposed to. Just as why have you forsaken me will always be followed with this to him indeed who shall all who sleep in the earth bow down, and before him shall bow down all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. And I shall live for him. There is this, even in this moment of, of seeing that 
that God is doing something more, there is this statement, and I shall live for him. My God, why have you forsaken me? No, I will live for you. I shall live for you. And so as we live into that world, even when we struggle, even when it's hard, we choose to live for God with each other. We shall live for God's love is with us. Let us pray. God of us all, hear our cries of struggle, hear our anger, our lament, all of the above, and yet remind us that you live with us, and you are here with us, and we shall live for you. In your name we pray, amen. I invite you to join us in our final song, Days of Elijah. Please stand. We have our instructions and we have our assurance. We know that Christ will come again, and until that day, let us walk in the light and spread God's peace and joy wherever we go. Amen.